Great to see so many people here to learn about minerals and petroleum. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so you do hear about uh, minerals and petroleum being a, uh, a fairly big part of GA's program. And I guess what I wanted to do today is just give you an introduction of why that is so and why it's so important for this organisation, being a government organisation, in, uh, in helping the government uh, fulfil its policy about trying to understand more about our mineral and petroleum systems and also why that's important for, for the economy and for us as Australians in general. So I guess uh, it's pretty, pretty easy or pretty, uh, you, you've got to be, um, uh, uh, understand that the minerals and energy sector of Australia sustains our economy. It's a large part of our economy. Uh, if you look at the um, proportion of merchandise exported by sectors across, the, across Australia's economy, the mineral resources sector here uh, accounts for a very significant part of our, actually the exports that we have. Uh, in 2014 and 15, this represented about $180 billion to the economy, and it's, um, it's projected to be about $240 billion by 2019 and 20, and that's even with the uh, dip downturn in the commodity prices. So a lot more has been dug out of the ground, and a lot more has been exported, and, and of course it earns us a lot of money as, an uh, as, a, as, a, as a country, and therefore there's benefits um, that flow through from that in terms of our standard of living. Uh, it contributes a lot of jobs, um, about, about 200,000 jobs directly in the industry across Australia. But there's more than that because it sustains all the services sector, there's the, all, the, all of the uh, um, um, uh, uh, hospitality jobs and also the uh, community, other community jobs that happen in the communities. So I think the last uh, estimate was it's, it contributes nearly a million jobs across Australia when you count all of those. And, um, it supplies raw materials for everyday life. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anything in this room, or even including the things that you are wearing, that don't come from um, the, the petroleum sector, or don't have some element of petroleum or mineral uh, impu uh, input into it. And of course, um, the economic growth for this country is dependent upon um, actually finding more of these discoveries, given it contributes so much to our economy. So there's a, so there's a big push by government to sustain this industry and make sure that it's a healthy industry and one that's internationally competitive because it underpins so much of our economy and the domestic agenda at the moment is all about jobs and growth and of course this is, um, this is a big contributor to that. Well, where does Australia sit in terms of its mineral and energy um, um, resources? Well, um, pretty good for the minerals, iron ore, in terms of resources, we rank number one and we produce the largest amount across the, in the world. Uh, uranium is the same. I think we have about 30% of the uranium resources across the world, and uh, we're ranked number one. Gold, we're ranked number one. Uh, zinc, number one. Nickel, number one. Copper, number two. And copper is going to become a very important commodity for the future if we look about, if we think about um, all the um, uh, uh, technological advances in computing and things that have happened. Copper is going to underpin a lot of that. Uh, coal, black coal, we are uh, resource number five, um, and, and uh, uh, commensurate uh, rankings in terms of production. However, when you go to oil, where we get all of our energy from, or most of it, and, and coal, uh, we rank number 25 and 31 in terms of production. So we have very, very minor uh, uh, petroleum resources in terms of oil, and we're a net oil importer. We import almost half of the oil that we need uh, that we consume, and that's a, a huge, obviously a huge impost on our, on our balance of payments. In terms of gas, we're ranked 10th at the moment in terms of resources, and 13th in production, although with the, with the advent of all of the um, uh, large um, uh, LNG plants and the, and, the, and the development of the CSG industry in Queensland and also um, the uh, offshore industry for, for, for LNG in Darwin and, and on the Northwest Shelf, uh, this is predicted to, uh, to be number one in 2019. So a massive increase in our exports and production of, of, coal seeing, of, of natural gas uh, over the next few years. Uh, having said that, uh, we are seeing a major downturn in exploration across, across, the world, across Australia and across the world. Uh, these, these, these graphs here show, go from 2012 to 2016 and show uh, in, the, in the minerals industry, exploration is measured uh, not by, just by numbers but also by the number of metres of wells that are drilled um, to find those new deposits. And you can see there's been a, a, a gradual decrease over time. 
In the year-on-year uh, -year on change in petroleum, you see we, we, we had an increase up until 2013, and then we've got a decrease both on and offshore in exploration uh, since then. And there's a large number of reasons for that, not least of which is the low commodity prices. When, when you do have a low commodity price, uh, exploration is one of the things that contracts very significantly as a result. So, how to, so the key thing for the, for the government is, is that how do we re redress this declining share in the uh, exploration so that we do maintain a healthy industry across Australia and so we can support our economy? And what can we do as a government to help them? Uh, not only have we seen decreases in Australia uh, in terms of exploration, but our actual share of the global exploration investment is declining as well. And that's because Australia is seen as a relatively mature place to do business. Those big new discoveries, those large resources that are untapped, seem to be, um, don't seem to be found in Australia very regularly at the moment, and therefore it's giving a sense that perhaps all the good stuff in Australia has gone. And uh, I, I'm sure that Megan and, and Aki will talk about what the Australian government is doing into the future as part of um, our forward program to help redress this process, or this, this per perception, sorry. So our global share of exploration investment is declining. Back in the mid-90s it was about 20 per cent, and last, last year it had dropped 10, 10, point, 10 percentage points to 11 per cent. So we're becoming a less, a less attractive destination for, for exploration, which is obviously um, going to be hurting our balance of payments if we don't, if we don't redress that, and it's a big concern to the government. So what's Geoscience Australia's role in the government to, to help redress this? Well, really we're about building and mapping that national geological framework uh, that map those mineral and petroleum systems. It's really to do that regional scale studies, map the geology, find out <coughs> if, it's, if it's suitable for, for exploration and help attract that investment to those areas. And we do this through collection of pre-competitive data. What that means is that everybody gets access to that data for, for basically for free. So, so because we collect it, it doesn't get tied up, everyone can use it and use that information to make decisions about whether they want to explore there or not. We also do regional studies, that's the add value to it. So we take, collect the data, but we also input our geological knowledge and um, expertise into that, and we, we put our own spin on what we think the geological uh, situation is like for the, uh, in terms of prospectivity around minerals and petroleum. The, the jargon around this is we technically de-risk the areas. Uh, the reason it's called de-risking is because the risk is, the great pro is, the, is a cost to the industry, the higher the risk, usually the higher the cost they have to, have to put into an area. And if we can lower that risk, we can also lower that cost and that becomes more attractive for them to do the work. Um, on the shore, of course, Geoscience Australia has to work with the state and Northern Territory government agencies and we don't do anything in, onshore without the uh, collaboration of, those, of, those, of our state and Northern ter ter Territory partners. And, and often the state uh, agenda is the same as the, as the federal agenda in, in terms of attracting that exploration. One key important point, GA does not, or the government does not explore for minerals and petroleum. What we do is we look for the geological um, framework or the geological um, uh, attributes that may point to a uh, minerals or petroleum system. It's up to the industry in, in, our, society, in our democracy uh, and uh, capital society is for the industry to go to do that exploration themselves and of course the revenue that comes back from that in terms of taxes and levies and royalties is, the, is, is, the, uh, is, the, is what the government gets from, from releasing that to the industry in terms of exploration. So just to make that point a bit, bit clearer, this is a triangle um, that, de that uh, essentially shows uh, the sorts of work that we do that goes into developing a, 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 an aerial extent of what the prospectivity may look like for minerals and petroleum, and then right up to a field of prospects here where we actually might drill a well to, to actually uh, explore for oil and gas. And you can see that the, over here on the, left, on the right hand side is the aerial extent of those, of those studies, and uh, Geoscience Australia operates at the base of this pyramid and forms the foundation for the work that the industry may do to help they use, build upon what we do to find that field and prospect and do the, do the actual discoveries and explore for those, uh, for those uh, minerals and petroleum resources. So why is that important to GA? Well, as part of recognising all of this and its importance to, to Australia, we have a, have a strategic theme, building Australia's resource wealth. It's about bringing that wealth back to the country, supporting exploration, supporting those discoveries, and then allowing, allowing the uh, companies to, to develop those um, on behalf of the Australian people. Um, so the key strategy, 
is to maximise the benefits from Australia's minerals and energy resources now and into the future. So what I want to do now is hand over to uh, Megan, I think, first, uh, and she'll tell you a bit more detail about uh, how we go and do that, and I'm happy to answer questions at the end. So thank you.